I'm back. Welcome everyone, Monthly Talk Time. It is good to be back in the office, not. Uh, it's more fun to be out traveling and doing my thing. Um, but I always say if there's a beginning of, to something, then logically there must be an end to something. So um, yeah, so the, the, the trip was fantastic, had a lot of fun, uh, did so many different things. Uh, it was the, the tour that we did for France was exceptional. We had a blast. I tried to downplay uh, in my last month of talk because I didn't want anyone to feel jealous, but at the same time, my brain's going, but I had the time of my life. <laughs> it's like that deed of the Dirty Dancing song, you know, and I was, of course, I was, I was being Patrick Swayze and Kevin was Jennifer Grey and I held him up in the air and we were both singing Time of Our Life. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back. It is good to be back in the office. There is a lot of perfumes. And um, as I started prepping for today, um, I've discovered so many new things while we were overseas. And um, I just realized that this is gonna become a four hour long Monte talk, so I've stopped it. So five fragrances that I'd like to put on your radar of something of new things that I've discovered. Some you will have access to, some haven't even been released yet. So I'm gonna give you the inside scoop on those things. But before I start, let me just uh, first give you the announcements. At the end, there's a lot of announcements that we need to do this catch up, but I'm gonna put it at the end. Those who want to see what, uh, what's upcoming on the NFC channel, you can jump to, or you can have a look at that. But the headlines are as follows. One is we do have a winner for the Unuit the Mad. Had a chance to catch up with Philip Solis, who is the owner of the brand, and we spun the wheel. So wait till you see that. Uh, Discovery series, I want to tell you a little bit more about that. That's pretty exciting news that I've got uh, coming out. There is an NFC Live that's happening at the end of this month, but again, I'll give you the details on that. Uh, Discord, I've had a few more people ask me about Discord. Become a member, join the Discord conversation. It is a lively place. The community that's actually blossoming in there is exceptional. Some really beautiful camaraderie going on in there. So anyway, I'll tell you more about that. Exxon's 2025, three spots left. I'll tell you more at the end. And lastly, if you felt a little bit of FOMO in watching that last Monaco and grass video, don't worry because we're doing the Italy 2025 tour in September. And uh, we, and I'll tell you more at the end. These are the headlines, boom, we're moving on. A little drink, but have a look at this. This is the beautiful people from our tour uh, that we just finished in France for the, uh, the France Fragrance Tour 2025. And during this tour, I discovered that that perfumery, the center of the universe is Europe. Uh, so uh, the, the, the activity, the, I, we're so far away here in Australia, we're so far away from the action that and we get things very late you know things come to us <laughs> to these shores very slowly and being in paris in and so and then okay so europe is the epicenter of sorry europe is the center of the universe when it comes to perfumery and i'm going to say that france and italy are its epicenter they're the core because the the amount of energy and activity and vibrance that's coming out from these two countries is just a joy to, to experience, a joy to be a witness of. Um, obviously being in Paris while we were there, had a chance to go into many different boutiques. Let me give you a heads up. I didn't get a chance, I mean, I'm, thank you for everybody who wrote all the different uh, things to explore. I just didn't have enough time. And there's, there was not enough, there, there were not enough hours in the day for one, and I'll tell you more about that shortly, because I was up till 1.30 in the morning. But this is, this is a guy who normally goes to bed about 11, 11.30 at the latest. 1.30, anyway. Um, and secondly, that the, everything is so centralized and compressed. You know, you walk out of one boutique in Paris and you, 10 steps and you're walking into another one and you're seeing and discovering new things. It was a joy. It was, for me, I was, I was, in, I was in Wonderland uh, whilst I was in Europe and then in Cannes. But while I was in Paris, I wanna show you two fragrances that have just been released in 2024. I'd like to put them on your radar. I really, really rate these two. So um, I'm not as fussy as Kevin is, and we've, those who are following the channel know that Kevin is ultra fussy um, when it comes to his selection of perfumery. I just enjoy, and I, I, yes, I have a vast collection, but I already know 
the difference um, when it comes to the new fragrances that I like that I like buying. And second, actually, my brain just said, I just like buying. <laughs> and I have a very uh, understanding financier, my dear wife, who allows me the flexibility because I, I, I do, enjoy, yes, I do like buying, but I also enjoy new things and new fragrances and adding things to my collection. All right, so let me begin two, one, uh, two fragrances that have just been released so you can access them. We don't have them in this country, and so I'd like to put them on your radar because if you're in Europe or the US, you're gonna love these. First one is, so Nikolai is, though, Nikolai Perfumer is a brand that was here in Australia, then vanished, and now it's just come back. Okay, so yes, it is accessible, but only just, all right? So this has just come back into Australia. Uh, this one here is called Saint Honoré. And if Luke is watching, I'm hoping I said that right, my brother. Uh, so Saint, 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 Saint Honoré. This is in tribute to the, the shoe pastry with the hazelnut and the cream and the, the sugariness, the caramel, all those pieces there. So it's a celebration of that particular pastry, that particular treat. Uh, it's incredible. If you like, so I've lately I've really, really fallen in love with vanilla fragrances. I've um, sort of expanded my vanilla, vanilla collection. I am gonna be doing another vanilla lineup. Uh, the last lineup, here it is, was very successful and I can see that people, though the, the desire to experience different vanilla fragrances is really, has really expanded. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what I like about this. So, because it is a tribute to that particular pastry, it actually has a lot of the elements, I guess, it, uh, that symbolizes or that expresses in an olfactory signature that that treat. Uh, in particular, the hazelnut. So it has a noisette uh, in its construct. But when it first when it first opens, it has a cookie-like quality to it. So think of the aroma that uh, sort of envelopes a house when cookies are being baked. And you get that mixture of the sugariness, the vanilla, but also there is the pastry component of it, you know. Uh, so on opening, you be getting, you are getting like a beautiful boulanger or that that gorgeous uh, croissant being uh, baked or the pan au chocolat. I'm doing all my French words, you see. Um, but that beautiful, those beautiful sweet notes that are in the air, and this is what happens on first opening with this fragrance here. It doesn't stay there. It opens on this sort of very enticing, very. Um, a welcoming aroma, this so you know almost uh, alluring, and then as it begins to settle down, you're getting more of the hazelnut, but not in a not in a nuttiness kind of way. So the the the, the it doesn't accentuate the the hazelnut note, and not in a Nutella sort of way. So there's no chocolatey sort of hazelnut component to it. What you are getting instead, and in the heart of it, is a milk note. So there's a like a a milk accord and there is a creaminess to it to the point so for those who have had a Saint Honoré treat dessert the the hazelnut sort of uh, cream has a has a vanilla creaminess texture to your in the you know sort of the feel in your mouth with that hazelnut taste to it and that's what this does in an olfactory way it does dry down to a very gentle vanilla fragrance and unlike any vanillas that I've got, so I've got a number of vanillas, the way that this dries down because of that milky accord, because of the hazelnut that's in there, I think there's also this other, there's another note in there that gives it another boom boom. Oh, it has a pepper, a black pepper note. And I think that black pepper on the opening cuts back on the sweetness that is deeper in the actual construct. All right, so forget the notes, the fragrance itself, right here, is a seductive uh, gourmand vanilla fragrance that is not sugary sweet. So it, it doesn't have, I mean, there's a, a beautiful fragrance called Fire at Will by Javoy that has a very a, a pronounced brown sugar, burnt brown sugar on the opening. A very, you can almost taste the sweetness on it. This is not, this is not it. it. It's actually quite subdued. It's actually that sweetness has been pulled back, but the creaminess, the hazelnut, the vanilla, and that pastry gourmand feeling to it 
all exists here. It is gorgeous. I was wearing it in, in Paris uh, as, as I was preparing for today. I sprayed it again, instantly put, put me into Paris, put me into walking around the Marais area. Uh, it, it was sunny, so it's great as a, as a spring or, or fall, autumn kind of fragrance. I don't think this will work so well in summer, maybe as a summer evening. Definitely is a cool weather fragrance, but any other time of the year, magic. If you like vanilla, <laughs> Saint Honoré, <laughs> it's on your, please, on your radar, test it out, gorgeous, really unique vanilla fragrance. Boom, that's my first one. Okay, I put here, this fragrance accentuates romance. And I think, again, maybe because I was in Paris and, you know, the beauty of, you know, the, the, the location and, and the things that we were doing, uh, but it really, in smelling it, the, its olfactory profile, it just accentuates romance. As a date night fragrance, you would be divine. Small drink, have a little of this. We had a lot of fun, can I just say. So another brand that we don't have here in Australia is Fudaraiku. Um, I rate these guys really high. I know <laughs> this brand seems to get a lot of heat. I don't know why. You know, a lot of um, uh, comments that are not um, kind. I, I actually like this brand a lot. Yes, and I think maybe because I guess the assumption is that if you're getting such a bougie looking bottle, so elaborate and obviously that's what you're paying for and therefore they've skimped back on the actual juice the actual fragrance i don't find that i mean maybe i'm not as fussy as some people uh i as i said i i don't talk about a lot of brands if you've noticed on the channel so there are brands that don't resonate with me whereas floraiku really resonates while i was there i did pick up four fragrances we don't have them in this country as i mentioned I do like them. I, I was testing prior to going to Paris and I was actually quite excited in going back into that boutique and, uh, and, and doing some shopping. Um, this is the brand new one, Rise and Fall. It's in celebration to autumn and the, the and as you can tell from the, the, the actual sleeve itself, uh, it's about those autumn colors, you know, the very beautiful array of uh, browns and uh, the, the the reds and all the all that the, that beauty that that exists when it comes to those trees changing color here in Melbourne we're quite fortunate we have beautiful botanical gardens and there are trees that actually symbolize autumn or fall and you can it, you know these it's just it's just beautiful it's a it's a very beautiful uh, time of season here in Melbourne and this cover here reflects that beautifully the fragrance if you could, um, if you didn't see what it looked like and smelt it, it would actually make you think of this time of season. Also, it has a uh, sitting by the camp, uh, by um, by a fireplace with a like a mulled wine in your hand, a coziness. You've got a blanket around you. There is soft lighting. It, it that's the imagery that um, that I think of when I'm smelling this this particular fragrance. Again, I tested it when we were in Paris, fell in love with it instantly. What I like about it is that it does, and here's the part that blows my brain, because what I detect, and even to the point where now that I know what the notes are, um, I'm still detecting these, these, these elements of it. And things like, it's a, it has a, a zinginess to it, but um, it has a, a spicy, woody, as I said, mulled wine, not boozy, so it's not a booziness to it, but it does have, uh, a spicy, um, uh, that ambriness, that warmth that comes from uh, the, the cinnamon, that uh, the warmth that comes from things like uh, certain herbal um, uh, spices, like like clove and things of that nature. This it had, and it has vanilla and has this beautiful round sort of ambery softness. As I mentioned earlier, I think that, well for me the best way to describe it is think of just a cozy blanket. You're sitting on a very comfortable couch or a very comfortable uh, environment. There is a fireplace somewhere in this space. The lighting is soft and you're actually, and you're with someone that you love being with, you know, and you're getting that energy from them. 
<laughs> that is this fragrance, Rise and Fall. I was wearing it, um, for me, the memories behind this is all about Monaco. I was wearing it as an evening fra fragrance when I was in Monaco. And for me, it projected beautifully in the night air. The, the, the evening in Monaco, again, have a look at this video. It shows, you know, we, we've sort of, um, we had gone for dinner and then afterwards we'd sort of walking around the park. And it was just, just a very sort of, it wasn't cold, but it wasn't warm. It was, I guess it, the, it, it's like a, like a spring sort of feeling or an autumn, fall kind of place. Uh, anyway, I could just smell this everywhere. It was just emanating from me. Um, performance wise, this is one thing, okay, so just a heads up. I find that French perfumery is not like, say, Italian or even Arabic, where you know it has a lot more push and a lot more uh, strength in, in its volume and presence. So both uh, Saint Honor Honoré, Saint Honoré and Rise and Fall probably have about six hours worth of performance on me, on my skin. And when it comes to its sillage and, and sort of projection, I find that they fall into a moderate to low. So they're balancing between that space there. They're not huge room, room fillers or anything of that nature. But when people come close to me, in particular Sandra, I was wearing it with obviously my wife around me, um, she was detecting this, this fragrance and it definitely was projecting on. Uh, so I've got a number of fragrances on me and Rise and Fall is actually holding its own really well. So that, it, like I said, it, it has things like uh, Peru Balsam, which gives it that sort of uh, like an aromatic, woody, um, uh, ambery sort of touch to it. It does have vanilla, it does have ginger, and I think there's Immortal Flower, which gives it that caramel sort of uh, feeling to it. It's not necessarily floral, but th that sort of uh, more sweet, uh, caramel sort of, I, I always think of, when I think of the Immortal flower, I think of Biscoff, that beautiful um, caramel sort of scent that, that a Biscoff biscuit has. Boom, 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 that's it. <laughs> cool. I think I explained myself as much as possible. Rise and fall. I, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Flor Um I will be talking more about them because I've got a nice little collection, uh, really good fragrances, and again, gorgeous bottles. Excuse me, have a look at this. Um, I mentioned earlier that I'm a guy that about 11.30, I go to bed, I'm done. I had an opportunity, to, so Khan is a big trade show that happens um, for all, it's, it's the duty-free tech, sorry, it's the duty-free show that happens. And as a result, it's become, the whole of Khan becomes this massive event, basically. There's an area called La Croisette, which is, looks like a croissant, I guess. Um, and a lot of brands go into hotels within that area. So you're, you're walking from one end of the Croisette to the other end of the Croisette and then back again. So um, I was, I had blisters on, I know, I know, what was me? I had blisters on my feet. I was exhausted. I mean, this is four days of go, go, go. Um, I would uh, so I'd spend the day in meetings. Um, it, it was a fun time. This is, and this is the thing. I'm, I'm not trying to say that I. I don't want you to feel sorry for me because you, why would you? But it was it was hard work. I had one brand. So the, the beautiful people from Boyce, Boyce nineteen twenty, Simone, who you know, I've done a lot of work with him. We've become very good friends. We've uh, he's almost like a brother, and he. He was telling me, he was getting very explicit, that nobody effing knows how hard this is. They think we're having fun, but this is effing hard work. And I'd have to grab by that, that by that stage, I think it was day three, and I was cooked. I was so tired. <laughs> What in the world am I complaining about? The second part to it is it was such an opportunity to see a million brands, new things, new players on the market, new uh, fragrances being released. Some of them and we're about to share with you now haven't been released yet, but when they do, you need to go hunt these babies down because exceptional. Now, I've been a big fan of all things 
Panador for quite some time, have uh, um, done reviews on the channel. I'm, I'm gonna do more, G give you a heads up because it's time to, to um, actually, th the reason why, this is the great Mr. Ibrahim. I was very, very excited to actually finally meet this man. The full story is this. We're walking along the Quasette. It's probably about 11 o'clock at night, 11.30. Kevin and I, we're about to go to a party. Um, the Italians were putting on a bit of a show. Uh, and uh, as we're walking, we bumped into Ibrahim and some others. And he said, and some of his colleagues said, why don't we get a gelato at 11.30 at night? I'm like, uh, normally I don't like to eat after 9, 9.30. But I'm like, you know, we're in Cannes, baby. Let's do it. So having a gelato at 11.30 at night and we kicked off as in there was, there was a camaraderie that began, that sprung together. And uh, I'm gonna be doing more content with all things uh, Panadora. He actually, he said, I, I like what you're doing. I, I'll, I'll reveal, I, I was gonna tell you in the, at the end with the discovery series, but we're gonna do a discovery series with all things Panadora. I put it to them that I'd like to, you know, let's do some more work together on this stuff here. And he has said that he does love the, uh, the work that we're doing. So, but a bing baby, we're gonna see more Panadoras coming through. You wait to see what happens there. But first, there are fragrances that are gonna be released in February next year. So at Exxon's, this will take shape, or I think prior, anyway. The bottom line is, as soon as it hits um, Oligarch, I'm, I'm jumping on in. There are four new fragrances, and I'll actually talk about the other two next week. These two here, I wanna talk about today, and put them already on your radar. The first one is called uh, Scandic, Scandic. And it is, as you can tell from the, the colors, it's a tribute to Scandinavia. And when I think of Scandinavia, so I've never been, so I've, I've been to Denmark, but I haven't been to Sweden uh, and, and that sort of region there. But when I do think of that Scandinavia sort of territory, I think of like, a, like woodlands, obviously. Um, I think of snow, I think of, of um, uh, and if it's not snowing, I, I think of like cool air and briskness. Uh, vibrance, all those com all those pieces there, and Scandic, and this is really again going back. This is a celebration uh, and tribute to Sweden, and it is awesome. Freaking, honest. Sorry, I, normally I don't, but it is. It, this is really really impressive. And I would, uh, when I tested alongside Ibrahim, um, instantly I'm like, man, this is a hit. This is gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. I've got it here, and. There, so this is one thing that I love about Panadores is that you look at the, the notes and you're thinking, okay, I think I, I get what this fragrance is about. Then you spray and you're like, uh, you know, is this the same fragrance? I mean, I'm, am I looking, did I look at the wrong notes basically? Because the, the way that he constructs it, there are some fragrances that the moment you, smell, you spray, and let's take uh, n nothing against this fragrance, by the way, the moment you spray, you're getting all the elements of it. You're getting all the pieces. You're going, oh yeah, I'm getting the hazelnut. Oh yeah, I'm getting the, the caramel, the vanilla, all these, all these sort of uh, parts that make up the fragrance. Whereas you spray something like this and all you get is a feeling. And the feeling is an equal part of the woody woodlands, as I mentioned before, you're getting that the freshness of the air, almost to the point where you're seeing some kind of w large mass of water. There is a, there is not, not that there are watery notes, but there is, there is a sort of that coolness that comes off from, from, you know, when you're close to like a lake or something of that nature. It's interesting that it has fruity notes, but they've been really toned down and to the point where I'm like, is there fruity notes? On the opening, I was detecting it. But as the fragrance sort of moves on, I'm not getting it as, as, as pronounced. Like right now, for me, it's, think of, uh, of like wood shaving, so grab sandalwood or something that is an aromatic kind of wood, and you get the shavings of that, and you're smelling the mixture of, I guess, the, the actual wood shavings itself, but it's not, it's not a, there, there is a, there is another scent, even like pencil shaving. There's a, there's, it has its own sort of scent profile to it, more than just the wood. It's gorgeous, honestly. So now this one here, let me just be certain that I'm because I'm still in the still in the testing phase, and um, as I said, the moment that it hits oligarch, I want to make sure that I take part in it. 
I wrote it somewhere, but I didn't. Oh, here it is, yep. Peach passion fruit raspberry. You would not know. So on opening, the top notes are peach passion fruit raspberry. I think of something like uh, Zurich of La Capitale, which has a peach and strawberry note on that opening, and you know it. And the moment you spray, you're like, boom, you're getting this very distinct, very clear fruit note. It's very vibrant. Whereas here, those, those pieces are the, they're just incredible. I, I don't know how he's done it. Uh, other things that I've written, okay, and heliotrope. So there is a powdery floral, because at first I thought there was like a rose or some sort of floral, but there's no, there's no rose, but I think there's rose wood. I don't know if that's the same thing. I need to explore that. But it has a very gentle rose part to it. Then it has things like the sandalwood and the, the, the woodiness and the musk in the base. Panadora, please, I check these guys out. Or check this one out, uh, Scandic. Uh, really impressive, beautiful fragrance. Man or woman, this is an easy unisex fragrance. Uh, super comfortable, really gorgeous. In the night air, I was wearing it because I got two or three samples of this from... <laughs> my good friend Ibrahim. Um, I was wearing this in the night air in Cannes. It was, it was very, it was warm and it was very pleasant. Gorgeous baby. The sea edge on this baby, on this thing here was phenomenal. I'm gonna stop because this is about the pop and I'm gonna talk at, to you about the next Panadora, which is um, Opu, so it's a brand new one, Opulux. Opulux, mama. Wait till you hear about this one. I'll be back. I'm back. All right, Opulux. So here's another one where the, it's hard to sort of pick out, no more, for me at least. It was hard to say, oh yeah, I'm detecting X and this note and that note. It's more about the, the entire composition of this fragrance. Again, another one when we were smelling, uh, and when I say we, it was Kevin and I. So Kevin uh, was very fortunate that he joined, uh, allowed me to join him on some of these meetings. Um, the, 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 the way to capture this, or the, 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 um, the olfactory sort of place that it takes me is uh, super regal, very sophisticated, three-piece suit, wood paneling, um, going into a, a formal meeting. There is, there is a sense of confidence with the fragrance. There is a sense of presence. It, not, not that it's masculine leaning, but it definitely has masculine elements to it. So I think some of the herbal notes and the woodiness that's in the actual fragrance. People's, another one, <laughs> please. I, it, the, 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 there was, I don't think it's released. So again, I'm waiting to find out from Kevin when this is gonna be in Australia. I'm pretty confident that it'll be here soon. But this is one I don't know whether he's releasing, as in uh, the Panadora people, are releasing in Exxons. I know that sometimes what happens is that a lot of the brands, and I'll show you one in just a second, where they are releasing concepts uh, or releasing, and then they tweak them a little bit more. This happened last year with Mar uh, Maraschino, with, um, and also there, there was another one called Dolce Sonata by Sospiro. And they, I saw them last year in Cannes, but only recently was it released. So I'm hoping that this baby comes out soon because as a fragrance that is just, that is a statement maker, Opulux, forget about it. Just really, really, really impressive. What am I detecting? So I had to look at notes. I had to jump on their website to have a look a little bit more about exactly what this fragrance is doing because for me, it, it's, like I said, it, it just it embodies this very sophisticated, well-dressed man. Uh, it's something that that again you would go into a meeting with, or something that you want to create a bit of presence with. Opening notes have saffron, clary sage, uh, basil, and basil always throws me. Basil has an equal part of that herbal component or piece to it, but also has a greenness. So whenever, I, whenever I'm confused, like what is that that I'm detecting? Is it green? Is it herbal? Is it? Um, it's, and I then discover that it, basil is the, the culprit essentially. When it does dry down, it goes into slight musky animalic. But um, so I know that some of these fragrances tend to be uh, Panadora tend to be quite woody in their in their sort of feeling. Here. It's more, is it more, it's more ambery, the saffron and the leathery com 
part to it or component to it is definitely very present there. But as I said, there is an animalic musky component or piece to this fragrance. I know that there is, um, I think there is a musk in the base, but there is also, I think the civet or something. I know I'll put it here, but there, there's another, and obviously it's not derived from an animal anymore because he's not allowed to, uh, but uh, it does have that animalic sort of muskiness to it. So we're gonna, I was gonna lean forward, but I'm gonna be out of focus. There is a booziness to this fragrance. And when I first experienced it, I actually thought to myself, it's almost boozy plum-like. It has like a, like a very uh, liqueur heavy plum. So like something like a, cognac, a plum in cognac or whiskey or something like that. So it has those woody ar aromatic nature to it, but also the fruity sweetness and sort of that dark fruit uh, sort of element to the fragrance. <laughs> All right, people's two fragrances you need to check out. Uh, Panadora, they're, uh, they're exceptional. Um, as I mentioned, I, I've, I've been in love with these fragrances for quite some time. Watch the space because uh, I will be doing a lot more uh, work with these guys and we'll be doing discovery series and things like that. But in the short term, if you can find these two, uh, Scandic and Opulux, I'd recommend too. All right, last one. So I, about two years ago, no, two years ago, last year, last year in the Exxons, I came across a brand called Reinvented. Now they launched a fragrance called Sacred Bond, huge hit, massive hit worldwide, a very successful fragrance, beautiful play with that. So if you like uh, that cassis black current note, uh, but done with woody elements to it. Uh, there, there is, it has a fruity, but not a, it's not overtly playful and, and girly like, so a man can wear it is what I'm saying. Uh, out of stock, all right? So this has become a huge hit for the brand. And, uh, and for me, they've put, uh, that one, that was my sort of my gateway into the brand. They've got an, a number of other fragrances. I need to do work on them. I, let me just say, I've, I've got a number of the other reinvented in my collection. They're really good fragrances. Um, and what was my brain going? I, 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 my brain was like, well, why haven't you done it yet? It's like, I haven't had time. <laughs> I, I always say I need to like literally clone myself. I need like three of me, one to do different parts of the business. Cause yeah, just there's not enough time in the day anyway. I will, I promise that I will do. Um, this one is the brand new one. So they've released two, let me go out a shot. One is called, this is the one I wanna talk about, which is Ode to Psych. The other one, I can't remember the name, but it's, I'll put it here. So that, that's the second one. This one is an easy love, all right? So this one here, uh, yeah, when I, when, I, when I sprayed and smelled it, I'm like, yep, no problems, I get it. It's, uh, it's a very appealing fragrance. This is one that I love. Now this is, and even when I was speaking to the, the person from uh, Reinvented, she was actually surprised. She's like, oh, I, I've, I've realized that perfume lovers, or so people who are now deeper into niche perfumery, so let's say veterans onto Five Star Generals, really like Eau de Psych. And it is an unusual fragrance. What I like about it is the repulsion attraction element of it. So there are moments in time where I'm like, whoa, <laughs> kind of not, and it's not sassy from an animalic point of view. It's just that it has a very deep, heavy camphorous note. Unlike the Panadoras where I'm like, I'm struggling to sort of really pick out notes here. It's very clear. It's earthy. It's, um, I was going to say, I was going to already tell you the notes here. Yeah, vetiver patchouli, uh, things like, so vetiver patchouli, where is it? The patchouli is just over the top, all right? So if you love that very camphorous, woody, um, earthy-like patchouli, a slight almost chocolate edge to it, but the camphorous is almost to the point of being kind of moldy. So think of a cupboard that if you're in the South Pacific and a cupboard with the woody elements has been closed off and the humidity and everything's got to it and you open up that cupboard and you smell inside, that is the scent profile that you're getting at times from this fragrance here. But I love it. Honestly, I, I, like I was wearing it. There are, elements of, there are elements of green, there are elements of wood, there are elements of that patchouli divine sort of glory that, that is so beautiful in, in, um, in, a, in a beautiful patchouli fragrance. I, what I, I think what I like about it is that it is unrelenting patchouli. 
Uh, sometimes you get a patchouli fragrance that sort of gets softened and uh, gets brought down to a, uh, almost, they, they try to tame it a bit more. Here in this Eau de Psyche, it's just let, it's allowed to run free and wild. Um, I, I actually, the, what I thought when I was, and I need to test this, I should have done it before I started the Mato talk. So the fragrance by Nasomato, which is Hindu grass, he stopped doing the, that patchouli because he couldn't find that quality of patchouli anymore. I actually would love to compare it uh, because that's meant to be a celebration of patchouli. And for me, this fragrance here, Eau de Sike, is definitely a very similar celebration. If you like earthy, woody, camphorous fragrances, boom, this baby's gorgeous. And in Cannes, I, I, was, I was using this fragrance while I was in Cannes. The heat, the, the summery sort of landscape, and this fragrance was just popping. It was pushing itself out. Gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Another one that I would put on your radar. I don't think, I don't, actually I don't know when they're releasing this. I jumped on their website prior to starting the Mata Talk. It's not on the website yet. If you go to Fragrantica, you'll see it there. Uh, so my gut says that they're gonna probably release this in February next year for Exxon. And again, I think maybe they're testing the market to see which you know, what are the fragrances that people resonate with? This one here, instant. It was very comfortable, very sort of appealing fragrance, whereas this one here, gorgeous. But a boom. We're done. All right, so let me just, small drink, and then, no, actually, let me do this. So let me begin the, the announcements, but let's not start the clock. Hang on, hang on a second. I want to show you this particular video here. Uh, this is, I had a chance to go and meet with the uh, owner of Une Nuit Nomad, Monsieur Philippe Solas, awesome, awesome man, just a genuine, generous with his time and energy. Uh, and we uh, had a chance to interview him. There's a new series that's coming out. We're thinking of calling it Behind the Fragrance. That's what, anyway, you'll see, you'll see when that comes out. We're working on that right now. So we did this. Okay, so we're here with Philippe, big time, the founder of one of the founders of Une Nuit Nomad. Alexandra is in the background. Yeah, right <laughs> they're doing business. It's like 7.30 at night. Yeah. And they're still bu yes. business people. Business people, absolutely. So here we have the wheel. Boom, looks gorgeous. And there's a lot of people who entered this competition. Okay, I just have to spin, spin, spin. Okay, one, two, three. Woo! Wow, with the sound, spinning wheel. And it's a, I made it. It's a very long. Who would be the lucky guy? It's a long. Yeah, it's a long spin. Yeah. All right. Tack, 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 tack. Here we go. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, we have the name Igor. 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 Boom. You are a winner. <laughs> Congratulations, Igor. Whew. So it's awesome that you've won the bottle. So if you want to reach out to me privately, uh, send me a DM. Uh, let me know what fragrance you would like and we'll get that organized and sent out to you. So well done, my man. Congrats to you. Now for those, uh, I mentioned earlier that the Discovery Series has been something, it was something that I always wanted to do. It was something that was sort of like uh, resonating with me that I wanted to share with everybody. It's actually created uh, a great burst forward. So there's been a lot of excitement uh, around the world with the concept. The Unui Nomad uh, Discovery Series has been a great success. The Kajal one, I recently caught up with Mo. Actually, look at this. Congratulations to the Kajal team. They actually won an Art and Olfaction Award for OM4. How cool is that? So well done, team. Uh, very exciting. Actually, next week, behind me, you can barely see it, is the new one. Let me just, I'm going to bring two bottles. Give me one second. So this one and this one. So this is the new... Actually, look at this video. This is the new Lamar Noir that's come out. I'm gonna tell you about this next week. This one here already is a compliment maker. Uh, this is one, the, so the, the fragrance hasn't been released. This was a special gift that was given to everybody because it was their 10th anniversary. Boom, this is all the footage. But wait till I tell you about this. And as I said, I was wearing it in Cannes and baby, I was getting compliments and I'll tell you more about that next week. And the other one that I'm gonna tell you about in just a second is Labsolute, but let me first uh, go boom, bouncing around a bit here. Uh, I was telling you about Noir, and then I was telling you about, oh, 
the Discovery Series. So they sold out, Kajal sold out of their Discovery Series. Uh, so it's been a great success also for them. We're gonna be doing another, um, I've put to them that I'd like to explore other, another five, another five lineup, like include uh, OM4 or Kajal OM4 because uh, yeah, it's a, this is a big hitter for them. Uh, so watch the space, another Discovery Series for Kajal will be coming out. Suspiro will be coming out shortly this Sunday Another episode for Suspiro will um, will go re will be released. I'll announce in that episode when the Suspiro Discovery series will actually take shape. It'll probably be in about two or three weeks time, but I'll give you an actual date in that episode. And then, as I mentioned, we've got Discovery series happening for the Panadoras. I'm super excited to also tell you that we're going to have a Discovery series for the Boyce 1920s. So there's a lot of work that will be happening. Like I said, I need to clone myself. I need to. <laughs> Because there's, yeah, there's just not enough me to, uh, to create everything. But I'm, I'm going to do it because that's what I got to do. Uh, now, the, so if you, having said that, there are Discovery Series right here, right now. I'll put a link below. So if you want to discover more about the Unimit Nomad or Kajals, then just click on that link and you can get a chance to follow me as I share fragrance with you in real time. Coming up shortly is at the end of this month will be the NFC Live. This is the day and the times around the world. I'll tell you more about that next week. I'm in conversation with a young lady in the US and we're constructing something together. So, but if you already, if you can, you know, mark the date, I'd love you guys to join me on that. That would be awesome. Become a member. So going back to the question about Discord, the Discord community that that is currently in place with all things within the NFC sort of uh, universe is phenomenal. There's a lot of beautiful conversations happening. The community in there is impressive, meaning that they're super supportive in the, the questions are raised or you know compare this fragrance with this fragrance. The, the, I get a lot of questions coming uh, to me. I don't have time. You most likely have seen that uh, there's been cricket sounds as uh, the, the episodes have gone out. Uh, I just haven't had time to actually respond to people. So if you've got questions, if you want to know more about certain things, that NFC Discord community is exceptional. There are some uh, veterans and five-star generals in there that can actually help out. There's a really nice camaraderie costs you four dollars. It's a support to the channel. More importantly, it does support the work that we do uh, and also gives you access to the, the uh, Discord and all the rest of it and also gives you access to let me send you something. So at the end of the month, which will be at the end of this month, I will do a raffle. We'll do another spin similar to what I did with the Unreet Nomad. And what I'll do is I'll send out samples, things like, things like, <laughs> things like that. Um, I'll send samples out to you of new things that have come out. Sorry, I've had too much mud there. That's what that is. Um, closing this baby down. There are three spots left for all things Exxons. So we are going to be in Exxons next year, Kevin and I. We're doing a tour for those who may not know. Uh, we have three spots left. So once they're sold, we're sold. I'm gonna tell you about next week. I finally have Lab Salou in my hand. I've been talking about so part of that. So if you uh, were to book with us, you'll get a 120 ml bottle of Lab Salou. And this is a new brand that has just launched. I had a meeting with these uh, beautiful people in Cannes. Wait till you see what they are doing. They've, they've, um, they've now, all this time they've been prepping, doing work behind the scenes. And they're now coming forward into the market. The fragrances are just, just rock stars, really, really. They've got perfumers from all around the world to create these fragrances. But I'll tell you more about next week. Something exceptional is happening. They actually, they like the work that, again, that I'm doing on the channel and where, anyway, I'll tell you next week. But three spots left, once it's sold, it's done. So if you wanna join us, you'll enjoy that experience. And the last thing, and I'll tell you again more in the weeks coming forward. We had an incredible tour through France the eight day luxury tour that we did. Uh, this is a dream that Kevin and I have been building. Uh, last year was our first, the inaugural. It was a great success. This year, we, so, you know, we didn't turn it up to 11, so we actually turned it up to about 15. And that's not just Kevin and I sort of, you know, uh, banging the drum. Uh, the guests that were involved 
were just so appreciative of the, 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 the whole execution, the whole experience. And we're going, so if, we've, we, if we turned it up to 15 for France, the intention is to turn it up to about 20, 21 for Italy. Wait till you see what we've got planned for that. So uh, at this moment in time, the, the, you can't book just yet. So we'll uh, open up the booking as of the 1st of December. But if you want to be the first to know what's on offer, because again, we're going to have limited seats. So it's uh, limited numbers who can participate then I would love you guys to join the mailing list. So you'll see, if you jump on the website, you'll see that there's an opportunity to put your name on the hot list. You'll be the first to receive an offer uh, to participate in that. And uh, yeah, and once we've hit our numbers, then we have to close it. Boom, that was, I feel like at the end I was racing. I was racing to the end. I was gonna do more fragrances, but next week, only because I knew that I was gonna take, try to explain these new fragrances that are before me and, uh, and and the intention is to put them on your radar so you guys can test out for yourself too. So yeah, I, here we go, we're finishing. Thank you guys, it's great to be back in this chair. It is good to be back and it's great to be back in the office and I'm looking forward to the amount of content that the mountain, a tsunami of content that we're creating and preparing right now, ready to, uh, to share with everybody. Do my best to answer all the all the uh, emails, all the comments that are coming through too. Good luck. See you guys. We'll see you guys all on the next episode. I've been in love with niche perfumery for some time now, and I also love travel. Now we've married these two things together and created KM Fragrance Stores. 2025 is all about Italy. There are two tours happening, one in February, the Exxon's Tour. You're gonna wanna join us on this one day event. And then in September, we have an eight day luxury tour. Rome, Milan, Florence, travel, good food, fragrances. Bada bing baby. You're gonna wanna come with us. Exxon's is the biggest perfume show that happens in the calendar year. Now this is where you're going to be surrounded by 400 niche fragrance brands. We're gonna give you a guided tour of the day. The Essence Tour is open now. We've already had a number of guests come and book their spots. Then in September, if you wanna now slow down the pace, eight day luxury, we're in conversation with a number of beautiful Italian brands in each of those key cities. Those dates are locked and loaded. So if you wanna join us for that, make sure you reach out to us to find out more. We look forward to an exciting 2025 as we explore niche perfumery, travel, and Italy. We'll see you there.